So the next speaker is Kian Murta and uh, Kian's Managing Director, Shay Murta Freecast. It's uh, over 20 years experience in civil engineering. Uh, been involved in the design and manufacture of many of Shay Murta's large projects over the years. Uh, his particular interest uh, in research and innovation of new products and manufacturing techniques within the company has personally researched and developed a uh, SEP tank waste water treatment system and rain man rainwater harvesting system right from inception through to production. Uh, Kieran is a graduate of civil engineering at DIT uh, Bolton Street and uh, Sligo IT. However, he did start his civil engineering education here at GMIT, so we welcome him back. Uh, throughout the years, uh, Shea Murta has invested uh, its employees currently employing approximately 180 people. Uh, it's one of the largest employers in the East and West Meath area. Uh, today, Kieran's going to tell us about his company, some of their interesting products uh, they're working on and projects. Uh, I must apologize, uh, I've got a, a slight uh, technical fault in uh, his presentation, so uh, I'm just going to sit here for the first slide or two to help him with that, uh, and then we'll be okay. Thanks, Kieran. I think, I think Martin's sitting here because he's afraid I'm going to say something bad. Um, it's difficult to follow Don Coley and talk about concrete products. He's a, anybody that knows him is a, he's a, 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 definitely an expert in, in concrete technology. Me, I come from a different uh, side of the concrete industry where I just try to sell it. And uh, my knowledge about concrete is definitely uh, a lot less than what, what Don is the other part. He, um, so uh, I was going to talk to you uh, about Shamer to Precast and what we do, and uh, then uh, I wanted to highlight some of the projects that uh, that were involved in or have been involved in the last couple of years. Most notably, the ones that were involved in in the UK. Uh, we now do about 85% of our of our work in the UK. So um, through the recession, we we just bailed out. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, that's, that's I suppose, where our focus is for the future, and whatever comes uh, comes in, in in Ireland is an advantage. The one pro project we're involved in, in particular is the, is the Crossrail project in, in London, and uh, it's, uh, I have a lot of details around uh, statistics and numbers around that. And uh, the last thing I want to talk about then is just the future and future projects that we're going to be involved in, and the, the ones that are sort of uh, coming on the on the scene for over the next 10 years, the um, uh, tunnels, bridges, and this, well, when we think about the UK and I suppose Europe in general, we think about um, much larger numbers than what you've heard here this morning around the, the capital spend of 400 million and 500 million in Ireland. Uh, when we talk about the UK, we talk about projects like High Speed, sorry, High Speed 2 um, with a capital budget of £34 billion, and uh, um, the one we're involved in in Crossrail, £18 billion. And um, these are the opportunities that, that, uh, that are only an hour away from us uh, if Galway Airport was open. <laughs> so, so to get to Dublin, it's an hour away. But literally, I mean, last week I was in my office at 10 o'clock in Westmead, and at 2 o'clock I was in Paddington Station at a, at a, at a meeting about a, a new bus terminal there. And this is how easy it is. It's not really immigration anymore. It's just what we have to do to, to earn a crust. So I have a small video here just gives a bit of a history on Chamber to Precast. We've been around for 40 years, but um, uh, it just, it's, it's an easy way to give an introduction to what, what we are, if Martin can get it going. Chamber to Precast is a company that is Manufacturer of British Industries. The last drive for recognition of 
Okay, thanks for that, Martin. So just, uh, I suppose, a marketing, uh, uh, short marketing video on just uh, to, trying to explain to our customers that there are potential customers in the UK who don't, who don't know where we are or what, what we do. So I suppose over the, the last while, we've grown to be probably the largest uh, precast manufacturer in the infrastructure sector in, in Ireland and the UK. And uh, we, we had to tackle companies, uh, major companies, but for BT, Curly, and Costing, these major uh, major companies in UK civil and worldwide civil in engineering industry, and uh, we've managed to become a, a key supplier to, to these guys. So as their projects, as they move around uh, the UK, Ireland, and even further afield, we're able to um, at least get at the table, get to the table with them on on, on these large projects. So just again, uh, just a, a list of projects. Product, different products that we manufacture here and uh, we traditionally would be known for doing water reservoirs around Ireland uh, so if your group water schemes your county council reservoirs uh, all that that's what would, would have been our, our key focus in the 70s and 80s and over the years then we developed into a number of uh, non, number of other other products but but bridge beams we we focused on uh, well the first bridge beams we did I think in 1982 but I think in what we saw was that there was an opportunity to expand into the UK into the bridge beam market. One of the reasons for that was because uh, 
Irish Rail, for instance, would have three and a half thousand bridges in, in, their, in the complete network, whereas in the UK, there's 45,000 bridges. So all of those were, uh, were, had been neglected for, for 20, 30, 40 years. And so the, the, the UK Network Rail in the UK uh, announced uh, huge plans for, for, for bridge redevelopment. And we were lucky enough, I suppose, in 19, uh, or 2007, 2008, to be able to capitalise on that. Uh, and these days we do, we do a bridge every week. We do maybe a few bridges. And a couple of years ago, uh, Christmas Day, Christmas Day, Easter, these are the busiest times of the year. Christmas Day, uh, two years ago, we did uh, 12 bridges on Christmas Day alone. And there was 140 odd trucks moving on Christmas Day. Um, we thought that had never happened again. And we came to Easter and we did 12 more at Easter. <laughs> so, uh, but that's, so I just picked a, a couple of different projects to, uh, to highlight sort of some of the things that we, we, we get involved in. So the first one here is, uh, is a peat store in the Shetland Islands. Uh, insignificant in that, except that the, the Shetland Islands is a bloody long way away from here. And uh, nobody thought that a company from Ireland could deliver a project of this scale. Uh, it's the largest reinforced earth wall in Ireland and the UK, 17 and a half metres high, 17.2 metres high, uh, 600 metres long with 100 metre wing walls. Uh, there was 800 truckloads just in this wall, and they all had to go from here to, uh, well, where do we go? We went up to Larne, Stranraer, uh, Aberdeen, onto a ferry over to the Shetlands. So Anton O'Rourke was the guy that was the chief engineer on the site, and he rang me uh, when we were nearly finished the wall, and he said, Kieran, I need another one. And I said, Anton, do you need another, what do you need, another panel? And he said, no, 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 I said, do you need another truckload? He said, no, I, I need another wall. And he proceeded to order another wall of the same size. So literally, that's the biggest reinforced earth wall in Ireland and the UK. But just beside it, we've got another one that's the very same. So 1,600 truckloads went to that, um, just, just on, that, on that site alone. It's a, a, a peat store for a new Total, total um, um, uh, gas thermal. The, the second picture there is uh, what is our sort of bread and butter now. Uh, this was a, a scheme called the W10 gauging, which is the, uh, to allow the larger containers on the trains throughout the UK. So they decided to raise all the bridges, basically around the south of England and across the, the network in the UK because uh, of the new Euro containers that were, that were just slightly higher. So this contract was 13 bridges and uh, they're all brick clad. So there were arches, uh, it was a new design, it's called the con arch. Uh, I think we've done 69 con arches at this stage over the last sort of uh, three years, uh, much like this, except in different areas, you've got red brick, blue brick, uh, all engineering brick, but we've had uh, bricklayers working in the factory for four years co consistently now, and uh, bricklayers are, Traditionally, we'll get some time off and, uh, you know, due to weather or whatever. The guys in our factory have been working constantly every day and they're, they're, it freaks them out a little bit. Um, the, the thing about the, 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 these bridges is they have to go in in a, in a, in a closed period on the rail line. So that, that, that closed period will be uh, either 24 hours or 32 hours or if it's a complicated bridge, it could be 48 hours. But if you go over time on that, it's a thousand pounds a minute. So the, uh, the emphasis is to make sure that you get it in on time. Um, so what we do is we put the whole lot together in the factory, the client comes over, signs off on it, we put it on trailers and send it over. We actually, we don't have to do the installation, they don't expect that, so it's pretty good. Um, uh, we do quite a lot of viaducts in the UK, so these are large bridges, special requirements. Uh, the one here on the top is Pudding Mill Lane. It's, uh, it's a station right beside the Olympic Stadium. Uh, it involved 12 Z profile beams. Nobody wanted to do these. Uh, they were between 110 ton and 125 ton, but some of them were, were actually curved the other way. So we had, uh, they fitted into a rectangle that was uh, 25 meters or something by about five meters. And we had to transfer, transport them to London, uh, right beside the Olympic Stadium. And that is not easy, but uh, we have 
traffic lights we have to take out of the way and we have uh, uh, all sorts of uh, logistic issues uh, challenges uh, that we have to do and also with this one because the project was going a little bit behind schedule we actually had to stop in the middle of it for the olympics and then start again uh, afterwards so we had a down period of two months uh, in the middle of the whole lot where we had to store the beams and uh, 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 for, for, for that period of time and storing beams that are 125 tonnes is, is, is not easy uh, in itself. The one on the bottom there is Summerstone Hub, and I just had that one there because uh, it just gives an idea of the sort of projects that we get involved in in the UK, as in the, the, the UK in general. Um, here we have a, a community, there's a tower block each side that was divided by uh, a road back in the early 80s. And uh, they found that there was some rivalry between the two tower blocks and uh, some obviously issues. So they decided to put a bridge over and build a, uh, build a community centre on top. And you know nobody would do this, but in the UK they think this is this is good sustainable development, and uh, they call people like us in. So what we have is a builder who doesn't have a clue how to do a bridge because they're builders. Uh, they need a civil engineering contractor, but they call us and we come in and design the whole thing. And uh, this one was a bit of a challenge because the, it was a timber frame structure going on top with point loads that uh, we're not used to dealing with in, 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 in normal bridge work. So on to uh, a couple of years ago, we decided that we'd get into tunnel segments. Uh, everybody thought we were mad. Uh, we don't do tunnels in Ireland. So, uh, but within uh, a short period of time anyway, we managed to land uh, 10, kilometers, 10 kilometers of tunnel. And uh, one of the, the biggest the biggest of that was the Crossrail Tunnel. We, we did, uh, we're doing, we're still doing the C310. But just to give you an idea on, on Crossrail, uh, 100 kilometers of new track, uh, 21 kilometers of tunnel. Uh, it's, uh, the, the tunneling itself is divided into uh, divided between three suppliers, two of them are on site or, or within the London area, and then we're in Raharney and Westmead. So we're delivering five kilometers uh, of the C310 package, which is probably the biggest contract we've ever, we've ever done. But just let me show you the scale of what... We're doing that <laughs> Just while, uh, while for us, uh, it was a major project, but that just gives an idea of the, of the scale uh, uh, of, of of, of what's what's been done uh, on Crossrail, we're also we, we do we're doing lots of other things uh, as well. It's been a major project, but uh, Crossrail themselves are uh, quite challenging with regard to uh, their technical capabilities, with regard to their knowledge of concrete, knowledge of uh, specifications. Uh, the there's some just some details around it. Uh, uh, the 6.2 diameter, uh, there was uh, about five and a half thousand meters of it, uh, and we were doing it for Crossrail. Uh, we were doing it for Hotif uh, Murphy joint venture, but uh, just there was 38,000 cubic meters of concrete. Uh, 38,000 cubic meters of concrete, 3,500 3, 3, truckloads. Um, it's uh, 20, 22 ton, 23 ton on each truck uh, of concrete from going from, uh, as I say, going from our factory across. We had lots of logistical challenges. We had 16 nodes a day. This week we're delivering 16 nodes a day. And if you can imagine when a truck leaves us, it's uh, 16 loads go out, 16 loads have to come back in. And uh, altogether we'd have uh, 22, 22 trucks driving between our factory and London every day and usually 24 hours a day seven days a week so you have four drivers on each truck and it goes around like that uh, we as a sort of a kickoff or a, 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 a benefit to the economy we had to buy 45 trailers from george dennison we had to buy uh, there's um uh, uh, lots of there was lots of benefits for for the local the local area this gives you an idea of the, the sort of moulds that we, we use for uh, for tunnel segments, uh, vacuum lifters, um, turning devices, the, everything is bar-coded and as I said quality is, uh, is, 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 
everything is inspected by Crossrail themselves. They will come over every month and make sure everything is going to plan, go through forensically through the quality documentation. Just around the uh, Donald's sort of idea around uh, specifying concrete and uh, and what was involved, um, we had uh, on Crossrail's SEM3 mix 40% 40, 40 GGBS uh, with all the monitoring that's required. We had uh, fluoride migration, water absorption tests. Uh, we had to we had a fire test, which was um, we had to send samples to, uh, to manufacture segments and Germany for testing. And it was uh, to give you an idea, it was uh, 1800 degrees of a flame on our uh, on our concrete panel for 45 minutes, and everybody holding their fingers so that it would pass. But 98% of our aggregate, uh, our aggregate is made up of 98% limestone, so we were pretty confident that we get through. The concrete itself is steel fibre reinforced, almost 98% uh, of it is steel fibre reinforced, so there's no cage, no rebar, just steel fibres. And uh, with that comes uh, some cost savings, but also the, a lot of testing, washout tests, seven day cubes, 28 day cubes, and one of the things we were very uh, disappointed is all the testing is done by a, by a university in Germany, Wuppertal University. So we're literally every week we have to send out uh, uh, pallets of cubes and beans and cylinders to uh, to Germany to be to be uh, to be tested. We were hoping that some of the universities here would would would, would be able to uh, do it for us. Maybe in the future we will. Uh, one of the issues, one issue we had during the during the project was uh, the tunneling was going a bit faster than the segment production. Uh, in that they were they had gone ahead of program, and uh, so they asked us would we double cap. So again, as Donald said earlier, double uh, uh, GGBS slows down the the reaction time on the concrete. So we were trying to get 15 newtons in eight eight hours, um, which is a challenge in itself. Um, we were able to do this with heat uh, we also we found with ggbs if we put uh, hot water into the mix uh, the reaction time speeds up uh, uh, and it was just it was the only way we could do it so literally we had uh, water at 50 60 degrees going into the mixer and then we had steam curing afterwards uh, to do this crossrail and system uh, again watching every everything that was done so we had to um, core temperature testing, we had to keep the core temperature between 40 and 50 degrees, um, temperature mass curing, uh, basically every technical challenge that's, uh, and every monitoring system that you can possibly carry out. Just some, just some uh, you see the trailers there in the stockyard. At one stage there we had uh, about uh, 1,600 rings in stock between the, the different tunnels. But just to give you an idea, that's about, uh, that's about five acres of stock just in in tunnel segments. I think everybody thought we were going to go out of business because of our stock. <laughs> so and that's that's it on site. I just have a few pictures there just from the um, from from the, the tunnel itself. It's a cart bringing them down to the to the TBM and all the services that are required for uh, for construction. Uh, we were also got involved in uh, with Cambridge University. They want to do some long-term monitoring of the tunnel. So uh, that for the next 80 years, I think they're going to be monitoring uh, the tunnel, the, the loads and stresses on the concrete to try and uh, to try and sort of see if there's any efficiencies in design for the future. And that involves putting strain gauges in and uh, data loggers to. To sort of monitor it over the next while, and it's going to be interesting, sort of in, in maybe five to ten years, and look back at uh, how how the ring has performed. They're doing that with all three suppliers, so it'll be interesting to see if there's any difference in that. <laughs> uh, also, we're, we're doing the carb tunnel a bit more controversial. I haven't actually been down to the carb at all, but uh, three and a half meter diameter, smaller one, it's uh, uh, five five kilometers long as well. It's a bit easier for us. Uh, definitely not as challenging. Uh, the only thing with it was, it's a I think it's a SEM2 BB. It's a it's a 68% GGBS mix, and we had to cast twice a day. So literally, we were looking for 15 newtons on eight hours with a 68% GGBS. And uh, again, there was a I think even the people that sell GGBS thought it couldn't be done, but uh, we've consistently uh, reported. Uh, 
demonstrated that it could be done and uh, we're still manufacturing today. I think we're finishing in two weeks time, we're finishing manufacturing that tunnel. So uh, trial, trial rings are done for, uh, for each tunnel. Uh, the, 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 top, the top picture is your tr is a trial ring. So that's done every, uh, I think it's every four weeks. You take one out, put it together and make sure that it, um, it fits, that has to be measured and documented. The tolerance on these, on tunnel segments uh, in manufacture, we measured the mold before and it's a half a millimeter. So once we go to um, uh, using on the final, concrete then it's one millimeter so uh, even the temperature will put you out of tolerance on, on tunnel segments now that's the, that's what in, that's what we the the, the 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 specifiers impose on us but then when you get down to the tunnel you can have it's going to be sticking out like an inch you know but uh but half a minute tolerance so every day things are checked with um the molds are checked with uh, micrometers and every four weeks we do a 3d survey on the molds and on the segments that's a pretty sophisticated piece of equipment that surveys each mold and measures to see if the curvature is out by a half a millimeter or, or not we can adjust them slightly but um it can be very expensive if you've had to throw away a whole month's manufacture because uh you've gone out of tolerance just after the guys were were surveying so these are sort of levels of tolerance that we're, we worked on tunnels tunnel segments um, thanks to the God, we don't have to work to that in the rest of the factory. <laughs> um, so, just again, just a little bit around uh, about the future. There's a load of names up here on the on the board, um, on the on the screen. The uh, you know, people ask me what we're going to do when the tunnel finishes. The tunnel's finished next week, uh, the week after. We we don't do we won't be doing any more. Currently, we're tendering for tunnels all over the UK. When we, even uh, just thinking about one, there's one in Glasgow, five kilometres of tunnel. There's, but uh, the Thames Tideway tunnel is out at the moment. Uh, that's uh, Thames Tideway is 20 kilometres of tunnel, seven metre diameter. 20 kilometres, uh, it's 2.3 billion. And uh, that's tendering at the moment. Um, the the big one, I suppose, uh, coming down the line and not too far away is High Speed Two. Uh, you know, uh, people ask me in the UK whether that's going to go ahead or not. In, since Christmas, I've had teams of guys measuring the roads around where we have to get bridges in, get stuff in, um, identifying sites for for stockyards and stuff like that. High Speed 2 is going ahead. Uh, the budget for High Speed 2 is £42 billion. Pounds. £42 billion. So if, if you're not going to be working on this in five years' time, you're going to be working on something else because of this. This is is a massive project. The first phase one is 15.6 billion, and that's not even including the rolling stock, which usually takes up a lot of it. That's just the construction of it, 15.6 billion. Uh, last week, I was at a Network Rail conference. Network Rail are currently spending in their new control period five. That's a, that's a period of expenditure between uh, first of April this year and eight years down the line, spending 32 billion on, on their infrastructure. 32 billion and there's uproar in the UK because they're trying to save 1.6 billion on what it what it could have been 1.6 and 32 like we're happy with that <laughs> so uh, that's as I say that's control period five eight years and many and, and in rail in the UK there's there's there's, there's opportunities everywhere and um, Transport Scotland I have that thrown up there as well Transport Scotland just the Aberdeen Western Bypass uh, it's the same as uh, probably from Moat to here, or, or even probably Kinnegad to here, uh, except there's more bridges and more technical challenges, more uh, more demanding, but it's way more money as well. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's probably end up at 1.2 billion just for a road with loads of bridges and everything else. Uh, the highways agency, some of the projects we're involved in, Haitian uh, M6 link, uh, well, there's loads of them, but there's a big one there, Mersey Gateway, just in Liverpool. Liverpool is you know, a couple of hours away and um, massive projects with the uh, Emergency Gateway is 800 million and uh, there's loads more projects like that. And on the back of the upturn in the residential market in the UK, they, uh, we find ourselves getting involved in private bridges that are, um, you know, that are like 12 span bridges, massive, uh, massive, uh, massive projects altogether and 
Uh, what did I want to bring this week? Uh, we have uh, 200 and 230 truckloads leaving our factory and heading for the UK. Everything from bridge beams to box culverts. Some of them are emergency works. This weekend we've got an emergency works project down in Devon, uh, and it's 57 truckloads of precast, one piece on each one. It's emergency works for a network rail project. So. You know, emergency works around here is in Ireland with Irish Rail is, well, we, we need one bridge beam or one box culvert or something like that. In the UK, everything is just, everything is just multiplied by 10 and the opportunities are even, are even greater. So uh, that's, that's about chain workers and, and uh, what we're doing. And uh, I hope it's uh, of, of some advantage to students and people that are looking for opportunities in the future. Thank you.